Even when it's a lacrimose point the Four Seasons are making there, it's cheerful. Pining for a night that happened a while ago, and he makes you feel good about it. That's a good musician right there. Hanky Valley and the Four Seasons. The earlier mentioned Dr. Jasser, Zudi Jasser, wrote an open letter to the Pope. In this whole debate, by the way, Ben Carson, listen to what the Pope said today and listen to what Dr. Jasser said today, and you tell me which one you would rather vote for for our president if that were the only choice. Dear Pope Francis, first I'd like to join millions in welcoming you to the United States, an extraordinary nation founded on the sacred principle of freedom of conscience. It is a nation where you, a Catholic, can be openly welcomed by me, a Muslim, during the week, the same week that the Jewish community freely observes their holiest of holidays, and we Muslims celebrate Eid al-Adha, the festival honoring the sacrifice asked of our mutual ancestor Abraham. I write with deep respect for your position as the religious leader of roughly 1.2 billion Catholics worldwide, as a Muslim whose faith communities are estimated to include over a billion adherents as well. I recognize your example as one that has the power to inspire change across religious lines across our planet. I have also acknowledged your commitment to a set of different examples for religious leadership. At times you have dissented with leaders in the Vatican on matters you deem important. As a dissident hungry for change in my faith communities, I respect your tenacity and concern for humanity. It is a concern I share at a time when once in a millennium tectonic shifts are creating vacuums. Nature abhors a vacuum. The world order is unraveling day by day, and the forces of evil are quickly filling it in the absence of genuine leadership from the religious and political leaders of the free world. It is out of that concern that I write, not just to offer you my humble welcome to our nation that gave my family freedom from the oppression of Syrian bathism, but to ask for your moral courage on the issue of Islamism, political Islam, the root cause of radical Islam. Islamism, the theopolitical ideology that inspires all all Islamic states whether full-fledged or quasi-theocracies, and which seeks the subjugation and even death of all who fail to comply with its barbarism, is undeniably the greatest threat to global peace and security today. It is a deep-seated cancer within the House of Islam. We're in a cosmic battle between the forces of Sunni, Shia, and secular fascism is taking place. Together, these forces are responsible for the oppression, torture, and murder of countless Muslims and non-Muslims today. We can continue to share blinders in the West and commiserate over the metastases which this battle spreads across the planet, whether through hate, terrorism, or or refugees, or we can open our eyes and hone in on the common root cause. It is that time in history when Muslims and our Islam must now come to terms with modernity. The historic bonds between your faith and mine are undeniable, and it is because of these bonds and your influence that you are perfectly positioned to emulate for the Muslim world what it means to advocate for individual liberty and to protect universal human rights. Most importantly, freedom of conscience, which can only be protected when religion and state are separate. It is this truth that has failed to take hold in the Middle East. While Islamism is a problem within the House of Islam, and that certainly requires a Muslim-led solution, we dissidents are in dire need of support from outside of our community. I write to ask you to take a firmer and more open stance against Islamism and for the separation of religion and state. With your influence, the world may respond more urgently to the threat of Islamism and more readily ally with anti-Islamist Muslims to defeat it. You are in a position to facilitate a massive reality check worldwide. But to do this, you must also commit to and model the separation of faith from politics. Political lobbying on matters like climate change may be compelling to some, but I would argue that your voice as a man of religion is more urgently needed on matters like women's bodily autonomy, the rights of children to be free from sexual abuse, forced marriage and other evils, the plight of persecuted Christians, Jews, reformist Muslims, atheists, and dissidents across the Middle East. In brief, you must make clear your own commitment to the separation of church and state, which will embolden free thinkers the world over to support the separation of mosque and state. Your legacy is already being established, and it is that of a courageous, forward-thinking man of faith. 
Will you join? Will you join reform-minded Muslims in our fight against Islam, Islamism, lifting up our cause, thereby helping to secure global peace and cementing your legacy as one of the great spiritual leaders of our time? You have a choice. To give a voice to your brothers and sisters in humanity, those dissident Muslims languishing inside and outside of jails across Muslim-majority societies whose plight mirrors that of all minorities inside their oppressive Islamist societies, or to remain silent as Islamists radicalize our youth supported by billionaires who export a malignant interpretation of Islam that is against all you stand for. Once again, Pope Francis, I'm honored to write you and to welcome you to this great blessed country. I hope that my words are received in the spirit in which I offer them. Brotherhood, shared values, deepest respect. May the one blood, may the one God bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. Why is it a physician from Phoenix can make a more compelling case on behalf of the true crisis of civilization right now, facing civilization right now, than a pope who comes from a society that should also understand what it means to be immiserated. You know, I keep hearing excuses for Pope Francis that his position on capitalism was shaped by his experience of capitalism. And it wasn't real capital. It was the experience of Latin American, you know, socialism. Well, you know, Pope John Paul II grew up with a set of circumstances, too, And we are not the product of our circumstances. We simply are not the product of our circumstances. We're adults with brains. And as Catholic theology also teaches, reason. Reason. 